Thank you, Holy Spirit of God, for your goodness. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your presence in this place. Come do what you alone can do. Come say what you alone can say. We give the entire service to your hand. Every nook and every cranny. Every personality we, we give unto you. Say, Father, come. Touch every life. Come change every mindset. Bring it to conformity with yours. Come comfort every heart. Come lift up every downtrodden. Come save souls. Come bless homes. Come speak to every one of us. By your precious Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Can you celebrate Jesus? Can you celebrate Jesus Christ? Father, we bless and celebrate your name. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you as you take your seat. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord bless you. I want to welcome every one of you back to church. Amen. Back from your trips. Amen. Back from your holidays and wherever you went to. Amen. You're in the right place. Praise Master Jesus. You're in the right place. You are in the right place. The psalmist says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Not so much as to visit as it is to stay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's why the man of God, the same man of God, the same psalmist goes on to say that we should be planted in the house or in Mount Zion so that we will not be moved. Amen. Amen. That we be planted. It's one thing to visit. It's one thing to come once in a while. It's another thing to make the house of God your house. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm happy to see every one of you that God has kept you and has fulfilled his word. That you are yet alive. Amen. Amen. That you are yet complete and whole. Regardless of the manifold things that might have happened over the last two months or so, you are welcome back. Please greet somebody by your side on my behalf and welcome the person back to church. Amen. Say, I'm happy to see you. Amen. Say, you look nice and ready for the new semester. You look nice and ready for the new semester. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible says the glory of the latter shall be greater and better and bigger than that of the former. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And um, I want to assure you that God has bigger and better plans for you this coming year. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you thought you have seen something these past weeks or months, God is just starting with you. Amen. 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 We, are, we are a people of progress. Amen. Amen. God's will is not for any of us to remain at the same place or level. Amen. Amen. Even though sometimes some of us happen to keep on being in the same place. Amen. Amen. But it's not God's will. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that is why I have a word for you today. Amen. Amen. That will actually help you. To move beyond the level you've been. Amen. You can't remain in the same level. You can't remain in the same level. 
You can't remain in that same state. Praise the Lord. You cannot remain a spectator forever. You cannot remain a, in the audience forever. You cannot keep on watching forever. You cannot keep on following forever. Amen. Amen. A point must reach in your life where you are, yes, you keep following, but you are also being followed. Am I talking to somebody? A point must reach in your life where you are not just watching others getting blessed, but you are actually being blessed. Am I talking to somebody? And that's why we have to deal with the blesser. Amen. With the blesser. Uh, allow me to congratulate you on the commencement of a new month. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Happy new month of September to every one of you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's now four months to go in this wonderful year. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Actually, less than four months. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Four decisive months. Amen. 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 Four decisive months. And I tell people many times, it's not so much how you start as it is how you finish. Amen. Amen. So, even if the last eight months have been bad, you can do something about the next four months. Amen. Amen. We are rewarded not for starting. We are rewarded for finishing. Yes, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be the most broke person as at now. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And you can end the year as one of the wealthiest people around. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be sad and heartbroken as at now. Amen. Amen. But things can turn around before the year ends. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Allow me to teach on a message I tied to. Amen. Amen. The Father we all need. Amen. Amen. Show me the Father, the Father we, all we all need. The Father, the Father we, all we all need. Praise the Lord. There are fathers and there are fathers. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There are fathers and there are fathers. Amen. There are fathers and there are fathers. John the 14th chapter, please. John 14. John the 14th chapter. John the 14th chapter. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The 18th verse. Praise Hallelujah. Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The King James Version puts it like this. It says, I will not leave you comfortless. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Greek word for translated comfortless is the word orphanos. Tell your neighbor orphanos. orphanos. From where the English gets orphans. So you will have other translations put things like, I will not leave you fatherless. Show me fatherless. fatherless. It means without a father. I will not leave you without a father. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is saying, I will not leave you. Jesus is saying this. He's about to leave physically. And he's saying, I'm not going to leave you without a father. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You may not have a biological father. Amen. Amen. You may not have a biological father, your biological father may be dead. Your biological father might have abandoned you. Your biological father might, you might not know him. But there's a father you should not do without. Amen. Amen. It's amazing because you have to realize that Jesus Christ as self sufficient as he is, in quotes, or could be, never functioned without a father. 
Am I talking to somebody? Amen. Amen. You can't afford to live this life without a father in your life. So me, I cannot afford to live in this life without a father in my life. Life is tough without a father. Life can be a mess for you if you don't have a father. And I do not mean a, an, office, an official position where you know, oh, I have a dad or a father somewhere. I'm talking about a father, really a father, and one who does the work and responsibilities of a father. For many folks are where they are today just because of the absence of fathers. Amen. Amen. There is a father which or whom we cannot afford to do without. There is, there is somebody I cannot, we cannot, you cannot. Don't even think of doing without him if you want to achieve much in life. For life is full of mysteries and obstacles. And you can spend your whole life going about one same spot or circle. You can spend the whole time in the wilderness. Years and decades and generations in the same spot just because there was a father missing in your life. And Jesus himself being the greatest, never sinned, never in shame, goes on and he's saying, I never lived without a father. It would be foolish of you. To live without, without one. So me, I need a father. Need a father. Amen. Amen. So Jesus is about to leave earth and Jesus Christ goes on to say, I will not leave you fatherless. Amen. Amen. Do you realize what Jesus is saying? This is the most important thing. If you can have a father in your life, the father I am recommending Everything is going to be smooth and easy. So be smooth and easy. Smooth and easy. Hallelujah. Amen. We all need fathers. So me, I need a father in my life. And Jesus says, I will not leave you without a father. Why? Because while I was here, I was a father to you. I was a father figure to you. He says, I will come to you. Amen. I will come to you. Praise Master Jesus. And he spoke these to refer to a certain personality. If you read from the 15th down, down to the 26th verse, he's speaking about the same person. He's speaking about the Holy Spirit. Show me the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit. Go to John, the third chapter. From verse uh, 2 quickly. From verse 2 quickly. John, the third chapter from the second verse. Speaking about a man by name Nicodemus, he said, The same man Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher. Come from God. Amen. Amen. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Amen. There are certain levels of achievements you cannot achieve in this life. There are certain levels of achievements you cannot attain in this life. There are certain heights you will never attain. Listen, folks, and please get this from me. I began to speak about this, you know, from, 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 from Friday, and I recommend that message to you. There are certain things you are struggling with right now that are nothing for the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. We began to teach on miracles. And, you know, I was explaining miracles, and then we have a teaching from Ternopil last week, Sunday, and then also this week, Friday. I recommend both of them for you. They're going to be online. The man is looking and he's saying, this level of achievement you are having, it's not possible unless there is God with you. There are certain levels of success you will never know. And let me say this to shock you a bit. You will not even know they exist without a father. 
You know, sometimes when we speak to folks and we tell people, do this or don't do this, and why you should do this and why you should not do this, you know, like I always say, how do you describe, how do you describe a skyscraper or a human being to an ant? It's, 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 it's not in his vocabulary. This is why you need fathers. It takes a father to show you things at a time when you don't even understand and you can't see reasons why you should do this thing. The father says, go ahead and do it. Or go ahead, don't do this. Am I talking to somebody? It's only as far as you can see. Am I talking to someone? There are levels of achievement you can't attain until God comes in the picture. Hallelujah. Now look at what Jesus will say in response to him. Verse 3. Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily I say unto thee, Except a man be born again. What? He cannot see the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Are you seeing now what I'm saying? Are you seeing what I'm saying now? Now, remember, he can't even know it exists. Hallelujah. Listen to me, listen to me, don't forget this, and don't miss this, and and don't sleep on me on this one. There is a level of greatness God has in store for you. Am I talking to somebody? That the Bible says, right now, eyes has not seen, ears have not heard it, nor has it entered into the heart of man, any man, including yourself. You see, you see, you see, you see, It pays to listen to God. There is a certain level you will never know even exists. Not to talk about attaining it. Except by the help of the Father. Amen. There's some of you right now. The biggest problem in your life right now that clouds your head morning, afternoon, evening now is nothing at all. And the greatness God has in store for you is being left unattended to. Why? The ignoring of a father. What I call arrogance. Arrogance. On Friday I call it foolishness. He said it's a fool. It takes a fool to disregard God. He said only the fool will say in his heart, there is no God. He doesn't say it with his mouth, but he says it in his heart. His actions, his his disregard, his, his disconnection. He says there is no God. It takes a wise person to stick with God. Hallelujah. What did I say? It takes a wise person to do what? The Bible says by faith. Abraham, not knowing as of yet where God was taking him, he obeyed. He followed. I'm, I'm talking to somebody. There is a place which a father can see. There is a level of great greatness. Am I talking to somebody? He says, Abraham, my Abraham, my son, if you are going to follow me, if you are going to do according to all that I say, he says, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to make your name great. Greatness comes from the Father. It would take a fool to ignore a father. Amen. Who is a father? A father is the person who gave birth to you. Hallelujah. A father is what? A 
father is that person who gave birth to you. And Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus and he's asking him, and he's telling him, except a man be born, tell me be born. Except a person be given birth to. Hallelujah. From on high. That's what the word again. Except you be born again. Again, not because you are born physically again, but again from above. Because you're first born physically from water, but this time you have to be born from on high. Except a man be born again, he cannot see. So me, I want to see. I want to see. I want to see the kingdom. I want to see the glory. I want to see the power of God in my life. There is somebody who created all these things we see. And he's not there. So Nicodemus begins to ask, begin to ask in the fourth chapter, how can these things be? Can I get back into, is it possible for you when you are old to get back into your mother's womb? And verse 5, Jesus says, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter, hallelujah, into the kingdom. So me, I'm entering. So me, I'm entering. Hallelujah. Except a man be born. Now, this God begins to tell you at this point who your father is. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God is conducting a paternity test. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Tell me, I'm looking for a father. Amen. 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 Say, I'm looking for a father. Amen. 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 Say, I'm looking for my father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water, the first birth, from mama, amen? Say mama. mama. And of the spirit, the second birth, he cannot enter into the kingdom. So who is our father? The spirit. When you have, if you have given your life to Christ, if you have been born again, you were not born, the Bible said, by the will of man. You were not born by the will of the flesh. You were not born of blood. The Bible says in the book of John. But we were born of the will of God. Am I talking to somebody? So much so, the Bible says, as many as received him, John the first chapter, to him gave them power to become sons of God. So me, I'm a son of God. Because I received him. Because I received him. Amen. He's showing us who our father is. Go to the sixth verse. He's showing us who our father is. That which is born of flesh is what? That which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is what? Spirit. So we're born of the spirit. Amen. Amen. We're born of the spirit. Show me I'm born of the spirit. I'm born of the spirit. I'm born of the Holy Spirit. I'm born of the spirit of God. I'm born of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is my father. The Holy Spirit is my example. The Holy Spirit is, is, is my source. He's my father. Amen. You know what it means to father somebody or something? It means the, the, that person takes from you his source. His basic, his or our basic element. His DNA. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So may I have the, the DNA of God. Say so I have the DNA of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. It matters where you are coming from. It matters. It matters where we are coming from. So I know where I'm coming from. So I know who I am. I'm born of God. I'm born of the Spirit. Now you will 
don't understand the value and the importance of these things until you come across scriptures. Like, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Overcomes the world. The reason you are going to overcome the world is not because you are so strong. It's not because of who you are. It's going to be because of who gave birth to you. Amen. And the person who gave birth to you has himself overcome. Hallelujah. When he walked into that, on that precious day, into that room, he said, children, fear not, for I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? Jesus has overcome the world. Whatever didn't stop Jesus will not stop you. Whatever doesn't stop Jesus cannot stop you. Whatever doesn't stop Jesus will not stop us. In the name of Jesus. It's amazing because Jesus is about to leave and he tells them, it is for your good that I should go. For if I do not go, this Holy Spirit, your Father, will not come. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus, that you left. Amen. For had he not gone, we will not be here today. Hallelujah. Amen. Had he not gone, I would not be here today. In John, or in John, yeah. Matthew rather, Matthew the sixth chapter. Matthew the sixth chapter. From the ninth verse. They had asked Jesus Christ to teach them how to pray. Amen. Amen. Teach them how to what? Pray. And Jesus begins to answer and he says, After this manner, therefore pray ye. Hallelujah. Amen. And he says, Our Father. Amen. Amen. So me, our Father. Our Father. I want you to underscore the the spirituality of Jesus and the essence or the source of his strength. Jesus was never detached from his father. Let me say this. You can't go far in life until you have a very good relationship with your father. I must go back again to this. And I say this very nicely. Don't let arrogancy rob you of the blessings that God has for you. I love the word, the way, I think it's Bishop Oedipo who says, he says, there is nothing more arrogant than a person who does not know how to kneel in prayer before his father. It is arrogancy or pride to disregard the father God has ordained for you. Am I talking to someone? As great as Jesus was, his greatest excitement, his greatest turn on was every time he ever got associated with his father. There was never a thing Jesus did without the importance and relevance of the father in his life. Now he's teaching and he's saying, when you are about to pray, you must have the father in mind. The father, say me the father. Our father. Say me my father. A 
lot of folks are going to ask, so what was the secret to Jesus' success? What was this? You know, this, 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 this. His secret was not so much a secret. For it was told to the whole world. It was, it was, it was never hidden. It was, it, you know, it was bore witness of to the whole world on a certain day. As he went for baptism by the river Jordan. And the Bible says a voice came from above, from on high. That said, this is my son. Your levels change. Things begin to happen for you and to you for the best. When you begin to recognize the place and the importance of your father that God has given you. Am I talking to somebody? The problem we, we have in our world today is that we have wrong emphasis. A lot of us think of people in our lives as though they were God. There are a lot of us who have people who have occupied the place of God in our lives. Some of us is friends. Some of us is things. Some of us is relationships. Some of us it's this and it's that. It's still arrogance. God must be number one. Am I might not know somebody? God must be what? Amen. Tell neighbor, you need a God friend. Hallelujah. You need a God friend. This semester, get a God friend. Hello. And the Bible says, and God spoke of him and said, he is my friend. Hallelujah. Amen. Need a God friend. One you can chat with regularly. Amen. Amen. One you can regularly look up his status. I know what's happening right now. Father, what's happening over there? Hallelujah. Amen. One, you can quickly follow his page and look what's the latest happening there. Tell anybody I need a God friend. One, you don't have to worry about saying good night to. For he neither sleeps nor slumbers. Amen. One, you are sure while you are asleep, he's still watching over you. And you are still connected. Am I talking to somebody? I'll take a break and a pause at this point before I continue. You know, as I say things like this, some of you, it's much for your imagination. Remember what I said. There are things you are not even going to be able to Believe exists. And yet, what I just said is real. You can have a literal relationship with God. Where we speak to you as a friend face to face. Amen. I remember I was in a vision last night. Actually, last day, amen. That night. And the Lord began to speak to me on some very important issues. And it's amazing because if it's not because I know him very well and his manifold ways of doing things, you won't even know he is the one. Hallelujah. 
Paul can speak to you. Amen. Amen. He can show you things to come. And all this stress and all these worries and all these concerns and all this you trying to make things happen for yourself will suddenly come to an end. So me, I need a father. So God, Jesus is teaching them how to pray. He says, he says when you're going to pray, you're going to say, our father. So me, my father. And it's important here because he goes on to say, which is in heaven. Because he, he realizes, you, you, you may think I'm talking about Joseph. Amen. 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 Or you may think I'm talking about Guri. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm talking about some, some, some man at home. No, 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 no. Amen. Amen. There's only as much as your biological father can do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let, me tell, let me tell some of you this. Let me tell some of you this. Some of you do not know it. Amen. Amen. As sweet and as nice and whatever, as whatever you share with your father is right now, a time is going to come. He's going to take his hands off of you. If he hasn't. Amen. 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 And we feel justified so to do. Amen. Amen. He'll be enjoying himself in a certain restaurant. Amen. And doesn't even think or care about you whether you have eaten. Because it's no longer his business. There is only as far as your biological parents can do. And a time will come where he has to check out of this life. But there is an eternal father. So me an eternal father. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It reminds me of that song. I have a father. Amen. Almighty father. He is Lord of Lords. I have a Father. Amen. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let me stop here briefly because I may not have time to come back to it. You have to realize you have a responsibility towards the Father. So may I have a responsibility? Toward the Holy Spirit. I have my role to play. As a son, as a daughter, I have a responsibility towards the father. And what is he saying? He says you got to look at some point, you got to hallow his name. The word name is the word onoma, which is the same word for personality. So I got to, I got to, I got to hallow his person. That is why Jesus was so much into his father. Jesus never joked with his father. Am I not know somebody? Jesus never joked with his father. Amen. You don't know how helpless and how messed up you are until your father is messed up. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you allow somebody to mess up your father... What will happen to you is that you are not going to be messed up. You are going to be exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond messed up. Am I not going to somebody? Yes, now, I have to tell you the truth. Because look, look at this. Look at this. Fathers are foundations. Fathers are what? And many times they are hidden under the ground. Fathers are what? Foundation. You know what foundation is? The foundation of this building is not the part you see. The part of the building you like when you want to buy, you look at, wow, it's so nice, so tall. It's not the part that makes, that holds the building. 